Uh, so welcome to this morning's session. Uh, my name is Justine Gilliland, I'm the Chief Executive of Te Puna Umana or Veja Taranaki. Um, and we'll just undertake our karakia. The words are up here, so please do feel free to join in. Um, the Veja Taranaki team will definitely be um, supporting me with this. So. Ko ona kawalui e tu i o nei, ko kaua tu a nuku e tau tō tō ake nei. Kāna hi nā mai mātou, i roto i te okorua i korua i mātou. Mō ake tonu, tihei mō riona. Right, so welcome everybody, great to such a good turnout. Um, there's some seats up the front, Michelle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a bright top on. <laughs> um, so yeah, what we're going to talk about today basically is a little bit of a recap about um, Tamaki 2050 um, and Tuff and then we'll get into basically a progress update on a lot of, not quite every single action, but um, really all of the actions and projects that are underway. Um, and then we're going to have some deep dives um, on some key areas and, and then follow, follow that up with an update on next steps. Um, in terms of the deep dives on the key areas, um, the three key areas that we're going to be hearing about today, um, we're going to be hearing from um, Hidinga Energy, um, from Araaki, the National Energy Development Centre, and from um, Veg Tanaki um, in terms of our Power Up Entrepreneurship Program. Um, we have also have um, other hui happening in Stratford and South Tamaki, um, so if you're interested, those hui have um, a different deep dive, um, or different deep dives, so if you're interested in some of the other projects, um, come and have a chat to us afterwards and we can always tell you what those projects are um, for those hui if you, if you want to come along and hear about those. So, without further ado, um, I would also... Um, in terms of how we're um, leading the um, Tamaki 2050 and Top White Oil work, we now have a um, consolidated lead group called um, Kai Pokatiri or Taramaki. Uh, and I'd just like to acknowledge John Snook, who's in the room, he's on that group, um, together with um, local government, business representatives, community representatives, um, union representatives, and of course Iwi. So it is a group that represents the Seven Po, which was the fundamental kind of leadership principles um, sitting behind um, the Taramaki 2050 um, co-design process. A little bit about um, Taramaki and Taramaki 2050. Am I still on? Apologies. Sorry, I should feel better. Um, so, Tapoiroa um, is the um, region's economic development strategy. It was um, first developed and published in 2017 with an action plan developed in 2018. Um, and then Tamaki 2050 came along um, in recognition that actually we need to make a transition to a low emissions future and we need to get on with this quickly. Um, one thing I will just note that um, when we talk about um, low emissions and when we did the work on Tanaki 2050, um, this isn't just about an energy conversation. So a lot of people think that um, low emissions is just about energy or just about transport and cars um, or just about um, livestock animals um, and methane, but it's not. Um, and this was very even as we went through the Tanaki 2050 process and explored with our community what's the kind of future that our people want um, in, in um, Tamaki in 2050 um, with their low emissions underpinning. And when you look at it from that dimension, you really start to realise that a low emissions future impacts on every aspect of our lives. Um, from everything, from those things that are more obvious, like potentially the cars we drive, um, but also um, through into things like health, wellbeing, um, and so on. So, hence why Tanaki 2050 is a very, very broad um, kaupapa, um, and has a lot of dimensions uh, to it. The other thing also that, um, just really important to note, that um, we, um, again, in Tamaki 2050, it's very much about having a focus on low emissions. So emissions are the issue, and that is what we are, have, we need to be um, kind of unrelenting in that focus on reducing emissions. Whether something, when we think about energy, whether something is renewable or not, is a different question. Um, and so from our perspective, we're thinking about that, um, that low emissions future and we need to retain every tool in our toolbox to be able to tackle that really important issue about um, emissions. In terms of how we went about um, Tamaki 2050, we undertook a co-design approach. Um, and I should just also acknowledge um, Natalie and um, Natalie Wiseman and Caroline Gunn, who are in the room, and um, many of you who came to the workshops would recognise their faces um, from doing the really, really hard um, 
mahi on um, all of our workshops um, to co-design our roadmap. In terms of why we went on this journey, um, we do have the second highest emissions per capita in New Zealand. Um, part of that, or the main, one of the main reasons for that is because emissions are recorded at source. And so because in Taranaki, for example, through our gas, we provide 20% of New Zealand's energy needs, um, that 20% of New Zealand's energy is attributed to Taranaki because that's where it comes from, um, as opposed to where it's actually used or consumed, which is right around the country. But it's really important that we focus on that, on reducing those emissions for New Zealand, um, for the planet, for the world. Um, we also um, have an ambition in Taranaki to lead the way in New Zealand in terms of transitioning our economy and transitioning to a low emissions future. So this isn't something that Taranaki alone is grappling with. All of New Zealand are going to have to go um, on this journey. Um, as I talked about earlier, for Taranaki 2050, we also tell it's really, really important because this impacts on everybody that we undertake a co-design approach and we work across um, those seven po that I talked about um, earlier in terms of the process. So this is our roadmap. Um, it's a picture. It's, there's also a document, but it's a picture because this is a much easier thing for um, a lot of people to engage with. And in terms of that engagement, um, we ran multiple workshops. We had over 70,000 engagements. We had people contributing to this um, from every age group and every community. Um, so right through from the kids as young as seven, um, right through to um, older people and in every community um, across Taranaki. In terms of the vision that our region came up for ourselves, what we want is a strong, sustainable environment. We want education options that move and flex with the changing world. So this is about that concept of lifelong learning. So when you're in a role um, and you want to make a shift or a change or you need to make a shift or a change, um, it doesn't necessarily mean a whole, you know, a whole new career or a whole new industry, but there's, there's that process of how can I go about the, the learning and the training that I need to support me um, on my journey and to help me do the, achieve the things that I want to achieve. We want um, attractive, meaningful, well-paid jobs um, available for everyone in our region. And we want a similar lifestyle to the one that many of us enjoy now, but we want that to be shared by all. So we want things to be shared more equitably amongst all the people in our region. We want to lead the way in sustainable low emissions energy. We are the energy province of New Zealand and we think that we can um, be a bit of a beacon for New Zealand around that. And ultimately as well, we really want to be a region that looks out and cares for itself and our people. Once we develop the roadmap, um, which is a long term, you know, intergenerational vision, uh, we need to then embark on the action planning. So how are we going to get, how are we going to get to that vision um, that our people have articulated? So we developed, um, set about developing 12 transition pathway action plans, um, also co-designed by the, by the communities represented um, through those seven PO. And these um, transition pathway action plans map out basically the short to medium term um, approach. So basically, the, what are we going to do over the, over the three to five year um, period? And the idea being that um, in what will now be three to four years' time, um, we'll be refreshing these plans. So we'll see how far, we, how far we've come in line with that vision, and we'll look to refresh the plans for the next um, kind of five year period. What I'm now going to do is um, hand over to our program manager, Charlotte Tewitt, um, and she's going to take you through the progress on the actions um, and some more information about the projects. Charlotte. Thanks, Justine. Uh, kia ora. Uh, ko Charlotte, this is Tokuingo. As Justine said, I'm the program manager of the Tanaki 2050 program in Tapa Wairoa. Um, I started um, in April last year, so it's been a year of amazing mahi and fun. And I've just got to again say credit to Natalie Wiseman in the room, because it's only once you take over a job where you see how much work um, and passion and dedication is involved. And, and to be honest, just stepping into this program, I feel very fortunate because you really get insights into the passion, energy and dedication of people in this region. And you'll see in the presentation we're about to do just how many things have happened and how many people have taken those forward. And we just get to present it. But it, beneath that, it's like an iceberg. You know, We just see this little snapshot of, of potentially what actions are moving forward. But beneath that, there's this massive amount of work going on. So, uh, so yeah, it's just uh, it's a delight to be up here and be able to summarise this for you. 
So um, we finished doing the Tenmaki 2050 TPAPs or Transition Pathway Action Plans in August 2020. And there are also actions from the TAP Wairoa strategy as well. So this slide is a bit of a snapshot if you like statistics. So TAP Wairoa had 107 actions, Tenmaki 2050 is 75. And uh, some of those were very similar, so we merged them. And uh, those combined actions, uh, 26 are complete, 96 underway, 14 remaining. Mm -hmm. And on your seats, you should have a nice pocket-sized booklet. Well, if you have big pockets. <laughs> Probably handbag-sized. <laughs> but um, there's some lovely shiny faces and pictures there um, to give you a bit of a snapshot of what's going on. And we have um, lots of copies of these, so feel free to take some for your friends, make great presents for people. And um, it's also online, so uh, feel free to share it widely. Also, across Tapuera and Taranaki 2050, there were 20 different ways of categorising the actions. So in terms of just putting this booklet together and keeping people updated, we've um, summarised that into seven themes. Uh, so if you were involved in, in a category and you're like, where's that? Um, that just shows you how they can combine together. So uh, as an update, uh, this graph, if you like statistics again, nice graphs, um, to go with pretty pictures, uh, gives you a summary and is also in your booklet. So you'll see that in some areas we've made great progress. So visitor infrastructure and transport, um, a lot of uh, funding from central government, thank you central government, to help out. In fact, um, recently had a statistic that um, the government since 2017 has invested 700 million um, above BAU and technology, so that's um, great to hear. Um, other areas where we're making good progress, so food and fibre and energy. Um, other areas we're aware that we need to um, step up our game, so we've been doing a lot in the talent, skills and innovation space in the next six months. So you should be able to begin to start hearing more in that side of space. And um, I'll just say on Māori Futures, when um, COVID came along, uh, Nā Iwi Tanaki got together and did a combined plan. And I haven't recorded those actions in this because it's a slightly different kind of recovery, um, but can give an update on, on those things. So now I'm just going to go through each of those seven areas. Again, there's more detailed information in your booklet. If I go through everything, we're going to be here for a little while. Um, I know everybody's got lunch coming up and we'll start to get angry. So uh, I'll just give a really quick, brief summary. And then we'll get on to people speaking um, in more specialised areas. So energy, as Justine said, we know it's a massive part of our economy and it's going to go through a large transition in the next uh, 10, 20 years. So the big one probably most people have heard of is Alaki, was launched in July, our National New Energy Centre, and it's great to have Brian Copley Scott come and give us some more information about that, so thanks Brian, looking forward to your presentation. Um, hydrogen, another area that um, we have a lot of specialism in Taranaki, a lot of infrastructure uh, to support it, and there's been a phenomenal amount of work in that area, so there was the Taranaki H2 roadmap that was launched in 2019, um, you might have seen First Gas put out a report on decarbonising the gas network recently using hydrogen. And we have Ryan McDonald um, from Helena who's going to speak to us today around what they're doing in the hydrogen space. Um, also part of energy is renewables. Um, the Ministry for Business, Innovation and Employment have updated a range of national studies that look at what's possible. And what's really interesting is the wind potential in Tanaki, particularly the offshore wind potential. And there was a report recently released that Venture Tabaki did with some partners on just what that could be, which is um, phenomenal and really exciting. And then there was an offshore wind forum in December to bring players together and start getting stuff happening. Um, also, WIT has been leading the charge looking to become an energy and engineering centre for innovation and excellence to make sure we've got the skills needed in the future for this new energy transition. Another major sector, food and fibre, where for me we're trying to do two things. One, we're trying to reduce our environmental footprint. We're trying to really grow that value, so looking across the value chain, so it's not just commodity we're making, but the actual products with a brand that really um, bring in the dollars. Um, and also thinking about resiliency. So if we do have major sho shocks to one particular part of our economy, like dairy, we have other parts um, that can react to another one trip home. Um, one of the major projects um, around food and fibre is called Branching Out. Um, Kevin O'Reilly is the program manager of Branching Out. He'll be speaking in Harrow tonight. Um, and we'll put his slides online if you're interested in hearing more about that one. But that's 
about identifying opportunities and options that complement Tadmaka's food and fibre value chains. Um, and that's really exciting. You might have seen there have been events on kiwi fruits, um, avocados that have got around 150 people to each event. So there's a lot of excitement and support for that project. Other actions, uh, there are a range of actions around sustainable farming and farm futures. So in South Taranaki, we're working with a catchment communities group uh, with a farmer-led approach, um, sustainable farm management. Uh, there's also a lot of actions around what we call food futures. So again, growing that value chain where it's not just the commodity, but the value add. So you might have heard of Green Meadows Beef, Tavi, all doing really exciting things in food innovation. And um, that Tadmaki food plan. <coughs> So the visitor sector tourism, as I said, lots of work going on in that. Um, you're probably familiar with a lot of these. So the Tanaki Crossing, uh, making great progress. And in Stratford next Tuesday evening, Doc are going to give an update on that project to the session. Uh, there's the cathedral work, um, a lot of infrastructure investment um, to reduce the environmental pressures of tourism, which is great. Uh, there's been a regional event strategy published, um, 14 million to support Palihaka, developing a visitor centre. Um, great to have Mitch in the room today too. Um, work on the Tadmaki story, um, Yarra Stadium. And there's also, if you ever hear about the STAP program, it stands for the Strategic Tourism Assets Protection Program. And that's a government fund that we're using to do a lot of excellent tourism, tourism work, like promoting Arch Trail and things like that. Uh, talent, enterprise, and innovation. It's great to have um, Michelle Jordan from VT in the room who's going to present on what's happening in innovation and the Power Up program that's going on at the moment. Also, huge mahi by wit at the moment. If you haven't seen the strategy that they've developed, it's really exciting for their vision to the region. And we all know that Just Transitions is about really supporting people having the skills to retrain, to develop, to, to really grow, and everyone's looking the most of their potential to support our economy. I think we've had, what, a 30% increase in students this year, so you can really see that work paying off, and it's an institute that we really need support to region. Also, the Chamber of Commerce, um, with the support of MSD, has created a Jobs and Skills Hub to help people with those connections, which we're going to need even more in the future. And Air2 um, have led some research about how to support workers going through a just transition. And as more and more of our economy changes, how can we make sure those supports are in place? Uh, well-being, lots and wise of vibrancy. Um, lots of work happening in the environmental space. You might have heard of Tadamaki Paku uh, which is about predator-free Tadamaki. Also, lots of programs like Kamai for Nature, which are funding environmental improvement projects in the region. Uh, Creative Tadamaki is a really exciting program. So, from the arts workshops that happened last year, a group of people who went to that said, actually, we need to make this happen. So, they've created Creative Tadamaki. Um, with the support from MPDC and others, and they've actually got a funding application to um, the Department of Arts and Culture, I think they're called, to, to really support that work. So that's really exciting, hopefully there'll be a big progress in this space. And also, just to acknowledge our, our councils, who have really strong leadership in this area, and you would have seen from all of the long-term plans that have been out, there's um, a huge number of projects there to move our communities forward, which is really exciting. Infrastructure and transport, a uh, lot's happening in the roading space, so State Highway 3, State Highway 43, um, making it easier to connect with our region. Also, work happening to promote electric vehicles, so when Amer Americana was on, there was also an event called Electricana that had about 40 electric vehicles there, so hopefully that will grow and promote electric vehicles, and also looking at charging stations around the region. Um, a range of things promoting sustainable transport and active trails, um, a group of people got together and formed the Tadnaki Trails Trust to promote active transport. Um, MPDCs doing a lot of proactive work around how they can grow the skills base for the infrastructure needs they'll need going forward. And other significant investments like the new airport terminal, digital investment, uh, the investment in uh, the hospital and in Tadnaki schools. Um, and so, as I said, in Mali Futures, um, really exciting at the moment. Uh, Nau and Tadnaki have come together, have a shared plan, and a huge amount of mahi going into that. So that's um, really exciting, as well as um, lots of other projects that have been funded. I'll do a particular call out for the Tupunuku program, which um, Mati Mali have been leading with Doc, which is about um, helping Ayatahi go and work with Fanua, get the skills, and then create a sustainable employment model. So. Uh, they can grow in that space and we get the skills we need to do all the environmental work we have. Uh, so that's a really quick snapshot into what's in this booklet. Uh, we're going to do a question and answer session at the end across all the speakers, so if you have any questions on specific things, feel free to ask or grab 
one of the VT team afterwards. Um, as we go forward, how can you stay in touch? We do a six to eight weekly newsletter um, that you can sign up through the website. If you don't receive that already um, and thought you signed up, check your spam filter because it seems to <laughs> like to go into there quite a bit. But otherwise, we can take your email address and make sure that you get on that distribution list. Um, and we also look to update our website and Facebook page. But that e newsletter is the best way to get the latest information, so make sure you sign up for that. Um, also, as you would have seen from this presentation, I'm just presenting the work of other people. It's, it's just phenomenal, the breadth and stretch of what's happened um, since Tapawara came about and through Tamanaki 2050. And we're only at the start of the journey too, when we think about what we have to achieve. So just a huge, huge acknowledgement to all the people, many of which are in this room, who've really put in the hard yards and the sweat and grind to make this stuff happen, because it's not easy. Um, but it's uh, it's just amazing when you see it all come together and making some progress and um, good signs the way forward. And in terms of next steps, so we still have lots of remaining actions and we have some areas that we know we need to do much more in. And so we're still working across what we call the PO, so local government, central government, business, EUE, education, community unions, to keep moving those actions forward. Um, also talking to central government around supporting our mahi and making sure um, they're around the table as a po, and, um, and as I said, continuing to move those actions forward. So without further ado, we'll move on to our speakers. Um, so they're going to have about 10 minutes each, and then we'll have 10 minutes of question answers, <coughs> and then we'll bring some kai out the back. So after that, if you're excited to get in, there will be some food, and you can stay in chat and network. Um, until we keep going. Uh, so, next up for Helena, we have Ryan McDonald, who's the head of new business. Ryan's had over 20 years in engineering consultant, consultancy um, and has had a number of general management roles across the industry. So, thanks for coming along, Ryan. I'll speak to you. Okay, there. Kia ora. Um, let me just set myself up here, my bits and pieces. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Perhaps some of you are expecting our smiling CEO, Andy Clennett, but uh, stepping in for him today to give you a, a very quick update. Am I just doing this way now? That way? Um, so, keeping it quite brief today, so just one slide uh, to uh, keep things uh, nice and punchy, but uh, we'll take you through uh, our two main projects and, um, and, and what we've been up to. So, um, yeah, there, it has been quite, a, quite an interesting uh, 12 months for, for us. Uh, lots of interest and lots of uh, building interest uh, at Heringa. Um, we're getting quite a lot of international interest now, in fact, and uh, actively engaging with companies in, uh, in the US, Germany, India, um, and not to mention Australia, where we've got two people uh, based now. Um, our, our team is, uh, is growing. We're about 16 plus, plus two um, non-exec directors uh, and our industries now cover uh, trucking, um, ports, uh, airports, public transport, material handling, rail. Um, we're getting involved in all of those sectors across across New Zealand and um, as I say we're getting pulled internationally now with the, with the, with the expertise that, that our team is growing. Um, we are still placed in the Clements household, though, so um, I think we've only got a couple of months left in there, I think, um, and we'll be joining Ariaki uh, in town, uh, which we're, which we're, well, it'll be mixed emotions, I think. Uh, so, first project, um, top left hand side, is as our uh, Kapuni project that we're doing with Billings. Uh, so, that's four or six megawatt turbines and uh, 5 megawatts of electrolysis and when that comes online it'll be one of the largest uh, green hydrogen uh, to ammonia projects in the world. Um, given the, the massive investment in this space it, it'll be eclipsed pretty quickly, uh, we would imagine, um, but it is, it is a, it'll be a good, good milestone. Uh, it's currently approved to go through the fast track consenting process um, and the team is finalising the application uh, for submission in the next few weeks. Um, with our final investment decision planned um, around the middle of the, of the year. Uh, just some facts, These, the wind turbines um, that we'll be putting up 6 times 4 megawatts, they're, uh, they're over 200 metres to 205 metres tall, which makes them about as tall as the Plymouth power station chimney, um, although much 
much skinnier and less bricks used to build it. Um, but they, they will be some of them. They will be the biggest ones in New Zealand when, when they come in. And, um, but I, I guess the, the, the thing that we've learned is that the Taranaki area is actually very well um, suited to the latest technology and, and turbine development. So as the turbines get, get bigger, they, they want a nice consistent wind. You don't actually need very high speed wind. You just need a good consistent wind. Um, which, which Taranaki has uh, its spades of. <laughs> and and that, not to mention the offshore wind, which is immense, um, the potential out there. So, yeah, that's a, that's a little bit about our uh, community project. The second uh, main project on our agenda is the um, National uh, High <coughs> Fueling Network. So that's eight stations. Um, so if you can see the, the light uh, orange dots there, we will be five stations between Auckland and Wellington, um, a station in Taranaki and a station in Tauranga, uh, and then a station in, uh, in Christchurch, the, that's the first eight stations. And, and then the rest of the stations, there will be 16 stations then by 2025, um, and that will then start to build out the network. With the, the ultimate goal is to have around 100 stations by 2030, uh, is the plan. Um, the, the main target for this particular project is heavy haul transport, um, so, so the large trucks, um, of which we've got 25 large trucks uh, starting to arrive next year uh, and getting into customers' hands. And the, the key there is that the, um, the use case for uh, hydrogen for heavy transport is, is very clear because they do the large Ks. Um, and they need to be able to take a lot of payload, so you, you can't uh, you can't be loading them up with batteries. Uh, so clearly, we've, we're advocates for all types of renewable energy, um, and we know where hydrogen sits quite nicely, which is why we've uh, headed down the heavy transport uh, routes. Um, I think that's probably about it. Uh, most of our stations are going through consenting process now, um, and. Uh, will be starting to come online around about uh, Q1 next year. So that's it for me and uh, take some questions later on. Thanks very much, Ryan. Um, so next up we have um, Shell Jordan. Um, he's the head of Hello, I'm Michelle Jordan and I'm the General Manager of Enterprise at Venture Taranaki. And it's, oh sorry, I'm going to wait, this is I'm apologising in advance. I talk with my hands so it's going to go over. <laughs> I have the pleasure today of, um, I might hold it with two hands actually. I have the pleasure today of um, talking to you about Power Up, which is an initiative um, around entrepreneurship support that is gaining traction across the region. What is Power Up? Um, Power Up is a Venture Taranaki initiative uh, launched in December last year and, as I said, designed to support enterprise growth by powering up Taranaki's e uh, entrepreneurship ecosystem. It's designed to um, enable and connect enterprises, ideas and individuals with a range of new and existing um, initiatives and support services to help grow capability and confidence, and to ultimately get enterprises up and running and growing. Um, importantly, it's also about um, supporting those already operating to help them grow and reach their full potential as well. The program was born out of Tapairoa research. Um, it emerged from the Taranaki 2050 roadmap and it also um, additionally reflects the importance of entrepreneurship support and enterprise support that came out of the recovery plan, um, Return to Better, for Taranaki. Why is it important? Well, it's simple really. Um, without smart, connected communities and enterprises, um, our future is in danger. So it's critical to um, Taranaki's future and our, and our well-being as a community um, and our, the well-being of our economy. <coughs> Um, to get that outcome and to create and nurture and grow enterprises, we need high, a high-functioning, fit-for-purpose ecosystem to support that. 
Um, and we also need to ensure that that ecosystem itself is nurtured and supported. For us, it's also about growing capability and confidence amongst entrepreneurs and amongst startups and amongst enterprises. Because without that too, we're really unlikely to get um, an increasing number of sustainable, successful and scalable businesses in the region. So, how is the program delivered collaboratively? It's not all about VT, um, not at all. It's very much about pulling on the collective weight and um, experience of our region's organisations and others who can contribute and who want to participate. Power Up is supported either through funding or resources, um, resource contribution by Tapaira, by council, by local professional services firms, Startup Taranaki, WIT, and thank you to John and his crew who have been supporting some of our programs recently. TSB Community Trust, Launch Taranaki, and, and many others. And it's not just about initiatives developed by Launch Taranaki. It's also about shining a light on all of the work that's going on across the expertise and the organisations that make up Taranaki's entrepreneurship ecosystem. So, how does it work? The programme is quite simply broken into three key areas, grow, connect and tap. So, grow. Grow is just about taking ideas to the next level, it's that simple. <laughs> It's not quite that simple, actually. <laughs> so GROW is about um, delivering an enhanced program of support and services, and it's designed primarily to support entrepreneurs and startups to gain that capability, confidence, the connections they will need, and the tools that they will need to um, become successful enterprises. And importantly, as I said, it's about supporting innovation, growth and entrepreneurship inside of existing enterprises so they can grow and achieve on their aspirations as well. It's about increasing incubation support and acceleration support, scaling early stage enterprises. So we're deliberately focusing on um, developing and creating 1,000 courses rather than the single unicorn. Mm -hmm. And we recognise that good ideas come from anywhere, so it's also about accessing those services and making that easy. Finally, it's about increasing those networking opportunities on the grow front, those kind of opportunities that encourage those happy collisions where people combine together and they collaborate. We have a good example of that in one of our um, idea competition finalists where they meet um, and they start working together and they've grown their business and then they're a finalist. Um, and they're a group of people that kind of knew each other but kind of didn't and now they're on their journey as growing an enterprise together. So, what does the grow part of Power Up look like right now? You might have seen or heard about the Power Up Ideas competition recently, um, part one of which was a six, six week um, co-starters program which ran earlier this year, ran um, from the WIT campus and um, it helped participants build their business plans for their ideas and learn about what it takes um, and how to actually practically start and grow an enterprise. That program was really, really popular. We had um, 50 participants and we have a further 17 on the wait list already for the next edition. Right now we're about to commence part two of that program and that's a um, two-month program where five finalists will receive um, tailored support to develop their idea further and launch. So that part of the program required entrants to submit a video pitch about their proposition and there were 39 entrants to that and they were amazing. So we were really well with the, the high caliber and whittling that down to five was no mean feat and really, really difficult. Um, so those entrants, those five, um, they cover a really interesting array of businesses. They are everything from um, product made from recycling, innovative skincare, agri-tech, food, and... Yes, right, thanks, Justine. Um, the technology around um, tidal currents. You know. 
So they will now come together and they'll receive $3,000 of seed funding, co-working space, coaching and mentoring and a whole raft of other things um, as they progress their idea. And on June 16th, they'll come together and they'll pitch their proposition to a panel of judges and one of them will walk away with $10,000 to help build their enterprise further. Um, in totality, that ideas competition is currently supporting over 100 potential startups with their propositions and helping them move along the pathway to launch. As I said earlier, GROW is not just about startup though, it is also about supporting existing enterprises, those that are already up and running, and we have a range of advisory services and a small um, funding pool to support the development of those enterprises as well. And we'll be um, releasing more about that later. Some of that, that funding mechanism is still under development. Additionally, alongside of those things, we're um, running masterclasses, and they're delivered by local expertise, and they're about practical tips on how to do certain things that are really important in business, whether it's understanding what problem you're solving or becoming really um, savvy on the digital marketing front. So we've run two of those so far and a couple of investment series um, workshops as well, around practical tips on uh, investment in equity and other things. Finally, GROW is rounded out by Tech Week and some online tools. So Tech Week in particular is, is a really cool event coming up in May, so watch out for the program being released over the next few weeks. And that program is about um, showing the relationship or the value of tech and community in an enterprise. So um, I encourage you to come along to those events, that would be very cool. Moving on to Connect. That second part is all about the meeting, the sharing and the collaborating and that's a really, really important part of, of, this, of the Power Up program. So Connect is designed to facilitate collaboration, increase inclusivity, make sure that this program rolls out and it captures the interest of, I think these donations are fun to <laughs> Capture, make sure that those the services and support is reaching into all areas of, of Taranaki, from the very north to the south and, and um, as far as we can, and that, that access isn't limited or um, challenging for those that want to, to move forward um, developing their own enterprise. So it's about joining up the dots and shining a light on the depth of expertise that already exists. Um, in Taranaki and it's also about supporting that ecosystem through partnerships and sponsorship and participation so that it grows and becomes strong in its own right because we need really good support to support those enterprises. So for us that might look like partnering with Startup Taranaki um, on the Startup Weekend through um, sponsorship and um, providing mentors. It might look like helping um, entrants into TSB Good Sorts the TSB Good Sorts competition with their video pictures. It might look like um, helping a startup uh, meet up with some potential investors. Could be a whole lot of things. But importantly, it's also about having conversations with the community and with organisations to develop support and reach into all areas of the community and look for the best ways to enact that um, so that we do reach all areas of the community. This VT by no means doesn't know everything or everyone, so we really rely on partners and other organisations to work alongside of us to get that to happen. Right, moving on to TAL, the third part of the Power Up program. TAL is about celebrating successes and storytelling, and it's a fun part of the program. It's about developing and promoting Taranaki's entrepreneurship and innovation story or narrative, and highlighting what we already know to others. Um, that Taranaki is a place of entrepreneurs, creative people, creative enterprises and um, people who have good stories to tell and are really inspiring to others. Um, TAL consists of targeted campaigns, um, a signature event which is Power Up Ideas Comp and promoting that and it's also about ensuring that others understand that Taranaki is an innovative place and that we encourage people to um, uh, understand and the belief to grow that Taranaki is a place where on, uh, on enterprises and entrepreneurs want to be. So that story is told within the region and outside of the region as well because we're looking to attract um, entrepreneurs and enterprises into the region as well. 
So tell looks like right now. Um, Um, key to the, the tell um, story right now are the Power Up pod podcasts, and I don't know if any of you have seen those or been listening to those, but they were launched recently and have been um, progressively released, um, it will be progressively released over the next few weeks. The podcast celebrates some of the region's entrepreneurs and um, innovators, and some of those entrepreneurs are in the room today, um, who are leaving their mark on the world while living the Taranaki lifestyle. Um, so far in a series of eight, we have released the stories of Dan Radcliffe, Letitia and James of Yonder, Rachel and Michael of um, Rachel and Michael Perrett, Anneli Kinsley, and Katahi with Pania Winterburn. So the next three will be just as intriguing um, as they partly do these stories and showcase Tabernacle as a place where people can flourish and achieve their full potential. Those podcasts are backed up by another suite of stories of existing enterprises, some of them really long-standing entrepreneurial businesses in Taranaki that we did late last year, and those stories featured in New Zealand Entrepreneurship Magazine, which is an online publication that's really, um, has tremendous reach across the startup community and the investment community in New Zealand. And finally, the, the next piece of the puzzle to come with Tell is creating some dedicated web content, including a guide to the ecosystem, so that people can actually um, easily understand what support's on offer, where it's available, who's doing it, when you can get it, and how to access it. So that is just about me. I'm going to close out with um, a few words from those who participated in Power Up to date, and I'm not going to read those out, I'll just pick out a few points. So the confidence, validation and resource that it has given our business is invaluable. Uh, it's been an amazing journey, we loved it all. It blew my socks off. And I've never experienced a business class like it. So there you have it, that's a brief intro into where we're at with Power Up. Um, thank you, and I'll hand back to Sharda and have to answer any questions later on. Thanks very much, Michelle, that was great. Amazing to see 100 businesses supported by that competition. And I should do a call out to anyone in this room if you're a bit bored with your day job and you've got a little genius to like, oh, you can connect with Michelle when your socks are blown off. You can be the next IDHQ. Right, so our final presentation today is Rai um, Coffee Scott from Adaki, head of partnerships. Um, many of you will be familiar with Rai, she's done an amazing night here in our region, so great to have you presenting here. And often a question I get asked is, what exactly is Adaki doing? So um, it's brilliant to have you here to share. <laughs> It's a great pleasure to uh, be here today uh, to speak on behalf of Araki. Um, yeah, but a lot of people have said, what is Araki? So um, I'm, hopefully you'll come out more informed than uh, when you sat down today. Uh, this is the whakapapa of the organisation. Uh, funding was announced uh, in May 2019, and um, there was a whole range of work, um, which is why we're here today around Tapawai and Noa in Tadamaki 2050, where the, the focus on Taranaki and a new uh, national energy centre um, was, was birthed. And um, so I, I do need to acknowledge everybody who was part of that uh, process. Um, uh, we were launched uh, by the Prime Minister um, in July 2020, so last year, and now we have six members on board. Uh, we've got a head of commercial, and uh, her role is really navigating that sort of niche service market where we can accelerate um, innovation into the market space and so into communities. Uh, we've got a head of policy, um, which uh, we know that policy can really amplify new approaches and unblock some of the uh, challenges that regulatory processes uh, put in place. So um, head of policy is incredibly important. And the most important of all is head of partnerships, of course. Um, but everything that we do is uh, we have people at the heart of what we do, and I'm sure that's why you're here today. So. Um, yeah, Head of Partnerships isn't just about focusing on Tabernaki, um, it is about a New Zealand uh, vision of that New Zealand uh, community. And we've also got uh, Caroline, who 
she's in the back. She's our uh, business and digital uh, manager uh, for Araki, and we've also got um, a project manager, Ahu Man. So, the purpose um, of Araki is really to support the transition to a low emissions um, energy future for Aotearoa. Um, there's a whole lot of background work that has gone into it, and a lot of discussions is um, um, just being mentioned around what is new energy, is it sort of baby steps into um, incremental change with fossil fuel users, or is it just purely renewable energy? So there's a whole sort of uh, dialogue or corridor going on around what is new energy, and um, that's a really exciting space. I'm having come from the health sector um, into the energy sector, so um, watch this space um, about how we define that. Um, we all know why Tatamaki was chosen to be the national hub, the national uh, new energy centre. Um, but this is where we really all join uh, the story, but where science, technology, policy and market have taken so far. What is often missing from this discussion around uh, new energy and technology or climate change um, is the places and neighbourhoods where all of it actually is picked up and taken on board. So um, the forces, um, the intersected communities is probably the, the interesting part for me is the head of partnerships and, and working with people. And Tatanaki is the heart of uh, the energy province uh, for New Zealand. Has a huge energy, um, has potential to address um, inequity and energy hardship um, and inclusion and all of the vulnerable communities um, is a showcase how we can do that for the rest of New Zealand. So it's a, it's a time for us, a really exciting time to connect you know, all of those different aspects, different um, multi-disciplines to make a difference for Aotearoa for that 2050 goal. Um, a couple of the projects that we are working on um, are, are really interesting. And this uh, group here, Elemental Accelerator, oh wow, that, I've got a lot of strategy EV with them, they're amazing. Um, they, uh, their whakapapa is in Hawaii, um, so sort they're of US based, um, they've been working for about 12 years. Uh, but they are offering a, um, a New Zealand, we've signed up with them, two uh, programs. One is a strategy track to help uh, startups with, um, with, with obviously strategy, market intelligence, etc. And the second track is the global track, which is around um, investment into uh, New Zealand startups. So um, they really believe that uh, renewable energy costs have fallen by 90%. So um, there's, a, there's a whole opportunity for investment um, and change, and we are entrepreneurs to really advance new energy uh, solutions for communities. And, and one of the sort of underpinning co-papa really is around social equity and social justice. So, um, you know, I'm really proud to be associated with them as well. And as I said, I've just come from the health sector, which I thought was a complicated uh, space and ecosystem to navigate. And probably if you've joined into the public health system, you'll, you'll agree with me. Um, but the energy ecosystem is equally uh, complex and it's very fragmented and um, it really uh, is not a linear process when you think about energy innovation from ideation you know, your, and your research and development to um, markets and, and demonstrating um, the, those entrepreneurial ideas and technology. So uh, we've been able to um, undertake some research um, that looks at what are the barriers to um, entrepreneurs and enterprise um, bringing new ideas into the market and commercialising them um, in Aotearoa? And um, there's a number of groups working in this sector, and so people have said, oh, isn't that what ECA does, or is that not what KiwiNet does? So what we've been able to do is really map out what our niche areas are, where we can actually help um, those um, innovators. So again, like I said, it's not a linear process, it's quite often a, 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 a round, it can be a very circular um, um, move and journey for those groups. So unblocking um, some of the, the barriers that are there, which we have um, identified as um, connections, capital and capability. So um, some of the enterprises may have the capability, but they may not have the connections or the language that they need to attract investment. So these, these are some of the direct barriers that we're able to help. And also uh, there's some system barriers as well. So uh, the systemic um, issues that we'll be looking at is, is that fragmentation within the ecosystem um, and the fact that it's uh, energy is a very highly regulated space. 
So again, that's where our policy um, mandate would come in. And um, importantly, uh, where Tatanaki leads the way is, is around leadership, strategy and vision. So how do we as a community um, navigate this new energy future? Um, another sort of couple of projects that we're working on is the multiple trainings project. And I, I didn't really articulate this very well at the last session, so I'm hoping I'm going to do a better job this time. But basically the multiple trainings relationship is a, is a pilot project that we're running, um, and it's going to be for 18 months, and the purpose is to lower emissions, but it's also to um, create more choice um, for consumers and for users of energy who maybe um, have, a, have solar, but they would be so, here we go again. Um, so they're able to buy and sell electricity uh, through choice. So when we have solar, we put our um, excess uh, power back into the grid. We only have one choice of where we go. But what we could do with a multiple trainings relationship is that we may be able to um, gift some of our power to um, a peer organisation or to a community, a vulnerable community, um, and we could um, buy power in one source and sell it to another. So it's about creating. Um, more competition, about more choice, and, um, and, and about reliable supply and efficiency. So um, it's an exciting project that um, we are uh, working with a number of partners that may not necessarily group together because it's one of those um, you know commercial projects where um, you know there's a lot of sensitivity uh, with those as well. So it's a great opportunity for us as a country. Um, community microgrids. Um, are something you've probably all heard about where um, it's an opportunity for autonomy and uh, tino langa tiritanga, particularly for Māori communities, where um, you can have little microgrids and people power their own community. Again, if we have um, that sense of peer-to-peer -peer, um, training as well, we can um, generate our own power and then provide it to um, other people within our community. So um, a really exciting um, project for us to be involved in. Another uh, project that we're looking at um, is the uh, Orion Accelerator. This is a partnership project uh, with the with Orion and uh, the Ministry of Awesome. So it's not more, it's the Ministry of Awesome. And um, so that we can bring energy innovators to Tanamaki. And uh, like Michelle was talking about the business incubation, this is a 10-week program where they will come to Tanamaki uh, it's a national competition open at the moment, um, looking for new energy innovation um, uh, finalists to um, be coached, have mentoring, be exposed to um, a range of different professionals. And of course, when they come to Tadamaki, they get to see um, how the um, energy sector is working in reality. And so, hopefully, um, if you're working within the energy sector, you'll come to one of the events that we'll host to. Um, mentor and meet some of these new um, innovation project uh, leaders. Um, Araki has been engaged in a number of research projects and um, Jonathan Young has done one for us, but we've also, the one I've just um, highlighted up here is the um, decarbonisation of long distance heavy freight, so that's a hydrogen project. That's one of uh, three studies that Araki is working on, um, again to be a trusted advisor with energy agnostic information um, to share to communities. Um, Araki is looking at new energy insights, so um, we were involved in the Offshore Wind Forum, and that's the mentioned already, uh, wave and tidal energy and carbon capture um, projects as well. So again, I will say look at our website soon, we are uploading, we have a bit of a change. Um, to provide that sort of knowledge hub of uh, what's happening and what are the great innovations. So it's great to see John and Gemma and Kyle here. Um, we're really thrilled to be partnering with WIT on a couple of projects. Uh, one of them is a scholarship um, into new energy uh, futures. And um, so that's going to be starting next year, isn't it, Gemma? Yep, 2022. Um, it's a three-year scholarship for, um, for engineering and technology. So uh, we are doing our part to support that uh, pipeline of um, new energy skills um, from STEM subjects at school and making it a reality so young people can see you know, what is the future for them um, in new energy. 
Um, another project, a demonstration project with high school uh, students is the Eva Lossi program. So we've got, I think it's nine schools um, around Taranaki from Pātia, um, Opanaki and North Taranaki uh, engaged in a, in a project to, to build a, um, an electric vehicle and they come together and have these fantastic workshop sessions and mentoring um, and it culminates at the end with um, with a competition where they have a racing, um, they have a race and find out who, I think it's, it's around longevity, so whose vehicle can go the longest. So they always put the tiniest and skinniest person <laughs> in the vehicle to, um, you know, work out the physics um, on that part of the project. So a really cool program where we're engaging, you know, those practical skills that um, the STEM subjects, like within a school setting, may not actually provide, but this actually gives them real life um, experience it's an intergenerational project where engineers and mechanical people are really interested to be involved and engage, can engage with young people and turn that light on for them, which, um, you know, I'm trying to get my son involved <laughs> uh, because it's such a cool program. Uh, also, we fully support the uh, COVE, the Centre of Vocational Excellence, and we believe that would be, you know, fantastic for that pipeline um, of young people through to, um, to tertiary education and to employment, but also uh, the, the commitment to that lifelong learning uh, where people in current energy jobs, which um, one of the earliest slides is about 7,000, how they can use their transferable skills but also pivot slightly to new energy technology and innovation using their wealth of knowledge and experience that they've already got. So, which is going to be an extremely important partner for Taranaki to allow people to um, gain those extra skills they may need um, as we move forward. And the best for the last. Now, even though I'll turn away in Indigenous partnerships, so this is a really exciting uh, area for me, uh, particularly because of my whakapapa here, but also um, I think it's a, a unique space that we have, not only uh, in Taranaki to make a difference, but um, also uh, working across New Zealand, but also looking at our indigenous uh, neighbours in the Pacific and around the world. Um, I'm currently recruiting for an indigenous partnerships manager, so this is, you know, this is going to be a really exciting space um, that I'd really like to report on you next year if I get the chance. Um, the opportunity for us to really partner deeply and meaningfully with uh, Iwi, Nga Iwi or Taranaki um, has yeah, I think it's, it's, it's a highlight for me and it'll be a focus over the next two years. Um, at the moment, uh, we have worked with two entities, I'll say, I can't say too much, but two entities um, to progress uh, new energy innovation projects uh, around uh, Māori housing, which is the number one PO for Ngā Emil Taranaki and also around Aotearoa. And um, we believe that there's a number of opportunities to hit multiple economic development goals such as the energy, Māori economy, um, food and fibre, and you know, potentially tourism as well. So, um, yeah, I think there's a huge opportunity and I can't say too much, but I want to, <laughs> but I'm not allowed to. <laughs> Um, and I think, yeah, so if anyone's got any ideas or any feedback they want to give me about um, different projects they have mentioned so far, please, um, please let me know. Um, my details, if you can, oh, there's no email, but I've got cards, so please come and see me after the presentation. But kia ora and thank you, and um, enjoy the day. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. That was an um, excellent, really exciting project. So I honestly meant that we talked about that university program on visions of these students racing down the hill at Bell Street. <laughs> so um, you've been a very patient and attentive audience. We're just going to have a bit of time now for Q&A and then um, break up in this guy at the back. So if I could ask all the presenters to come and take your seats in front. And I'll comrades, the microphone. Yeah, we'll just take a few questions and then um, if you have the chance to ask a question, we'll keep coming and grab stuff afterwards. Um, so I'll pass this over to these people so I don't have to answer any questions. Does anyone want to get us started? Mm -hmm. You got anyone to? Um, yes, I've got a question for this one. It's for Michelle. 
Um, I'm just wondering, so what type of business case do you expect to already be um, developed before people come to you with your ideas? Um, thanks, Conrad. Actually, people don't have to have developed their business case. We um, work with people at the idea stage, um, at where they've already got a business plan or proposition, whatever stage of the journey they're at, um, we're there to walk alongside of them and help connect them up with the support they need at that time. Uh, my name's Brian Cox, I'm from the Bioenergy Association. I'm interested in uh, looking uh, at your overview. Uh, I'm new to the, the region, so I haven't been involved in what's been done. But uh, one of the biggest resources we have is what we grow uh, in terms of the biomass uh, coupled with the waste that we have. And uh, we've got programs on terms of wind, we've got programs on hydrogen, but uh, the utilisation of the, the skills that we have in the, in the petroleum and, and gas sector, which is biochemical, uh, pulling apart uh, material and then putting it back together again, which is the skills uh, needed for a bioeconomy. Uh, but I don't see that, and I couldn't see, if I came to talk to you, where I could fit that into your program. It seems to be a, a, a big gap. Um, so in terms of, um, Tanaki, you're yeah, absolutely right, like it's, a, um, it's absolutely a really important and vital part of the energy ecosystem. It didn't come through really strongly in Top Water Water, like in 2050, um, partly because we don't, at this stage, in terms of most people think about it in a forestry context, and we don't have a lot of forestry waste in Tanaki, because we don't have a lot of wood processing occurring here. Um, but having said that, it's absolutely on the kind of future radar, and for example, there is a um, project happening um, that um, is in Martin at this stage, um, but that we're keeping a very close eye on and are closely connected to in terms of the potential for that project to expand through um, and, as you say, utilise more of the capability in Tamaki. The reason it's located in Martin at this stage is because of the close the proximity to um, locking routes and so on. Um, but yeah, absolutely, um, definitely keen on that potential in the future, so yeah, very, very happy to chat. Um, we are in sort of conversations with Lincoln University around the energy farm that um, does have that concept of that circular ag economy, so not only demonstrating new technologies in the agricultural setting, but also the bio and energy component really linked into it. So, um, Brian and I have been communicated by email, but we haven't actually met, so it's nice to meet him. And of course, he had to have a tricky question. Um, but yeah, no, it's definitely on our focus. Um, and as Justine said, you know, it would probably be in the context that, you know, us in Tokanaki would be looking at. So, you know, the agriculture one makes a lot of sense to me. So I think just to um, add to that as well is that the um, first case obviously identified as well the importance of why I guess um, in terms of their potential mix and their pipelines going forward. So yeah, absolutely on the radar. Yep, give me a chat. Kia ora, it's uh, Kathleen Trill from Climate Justice Taranaki. Um, my question is um, how do we think uh, hydrogen would contribute to social equity and social justice, knowing the cost of producing green hydrogen and uh, the, the inefficiency of the technology? I understand it, you, you use three times as much energy in the process of making hydrogen and using it as an energy source compared to just use, um, using renewable energy. So how, how is that going to foster um, social justice and equity, which I understand is a key, um, a key goal. I, I would like to see that as a key goal of moving to um, the 2030, with like, or 2050. Um, yeah, there's probably a few people who help with that. I think, um, but first of all, I would note that um, the, the hydrogen, a lot of the hydrogen that we're talking about is green hydrogen, which means that it is produced from renewable energy, so just as a starter. But obviously also there is the economic study that Araki have done. The whole cost of hydrogen production is rapidly, rapidly coming down, um, but I'll hand over to Ryan. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, there, there is uh, there is an efficiency penalty uh, to pay, but the uh, 
what we do with hydrogen is that we, we create it during the off-peak hours. So times when uh, there's a lot of uh, excess wind, um, we can be sucking that up. Otherwise, it actually just goes to waste. Um, so we're actually using energy that would otherwise just go to waste. Um, so uh, I think it's, uh, you know, and, and then on the other flip side, what we're actually creating here is a democratizing energy. It, it actually allows every region to, to create one their own energy. Producing hydrogen. What's that, sorry? It's just one company producing hydrogen. As far as we could see it, it's going to drive electricity prices high. And I don't see how it democratizes energy. Yeah, well, essentially, we're not going to have a product if the electricity price is high. So our driver is to increase the amount of renewable energy as high as we possibly can. We have to overbuild the amount of energy just so that we know that we've got enough renewable energy uh, to supply our plants. And we're, we're generating the hydrogen all around New Zealand, uh, essentially. And it is a nascent industry, so uh, we're, we might be the first, but we're not going to be the only. That's absolutely for sure. You know, all the, all the supermakers are, are turning to green hydrogen as well. Um, so I think you'll find that uh, in the next 10 years there will be a lot of companies that are focused on green hydrogen in New Zealand because we've got such a great uh, renewable resource in this country. I think we've just got time for one last question. Yeah, hello. Uh, my name is Jim Tucker. Um, I was intrigued at the mention of wave energy. Um, Araki apparently is interested in that. Uh, I've written very extensively about it and, and enthusiastically. But uh, what I discovered was there is no um, interest whatever in Wellington. And the, the Provincial Growth Fund didn't bite. Um, and really the people who are doing it here are left with working with the Americans. I haven't heard where they are now or what's happened. So I'm encouraged that you had mentioned it today. Could you tell me where that's going to go? Is that a real possibility? Can you tell me? Araki has been working with uh, EHL on the Azura, the Azura project. Um, um, and given them an opportunity to repitch um, the concept and, and the target market that they were looking at. So shifting it away from not necessarily a residential um, uh, energy technology, but maybe more around the marine um, areas and also this connection to desalination and also um, markets abroad, so the the Pacific Islands. So, um, you know, whilst it may not have made the PGF this round, there is opportunities and new markets that we are exploring with them or helping them to explore um, to, uh, to grow that opportunity. Yeah. It's really an export technology. It's really an export technology opportunity mm -hmm. as opposed to so much of a domestic um, power. Yes, system. I think I worked out that need 700 of them floating off uh, the port here to visit yeah. power in New Plymouth, and that wasn't the right prospect. Yeah. <laughs> Great, thanks very much for watching the just then. It's a close session. Yes. So, um, thanks everybody, thanks for your engagement, thanks for your attendance, and apologies, I don't know if it's just me, but the room does feel a little bit warm, so sorry about that. Um, but yeah, and thanks very much to our speakers today for coming along and sharing all your um, mahi that, that's going on. Um, as you can see from the presentation from Shala, I think you know, there, there's a lot going on, and if you do want to find out more about um, anything in particular that we've mentioned today or it's in the booklet, um, please just reach out to, to anyone at Venture Tamaki um, and we can um, either help provide the information or pass you um, on to somebody who's um, more, more heavily involved in um, a particular project. Um, so I'd just like to um, close now with our um, karakia um, and um, we also, what I also do, I'm sorry, we've, we do have um, the words of our closing karakia um, on, the, on the screen here, so, so we'll use that one um, and we, we might do a special little one for the, for the kai following that. So please do um, feel free to join in with me again. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Pangina kai hai rangu mu mata tina na panga na kio mata waru. Kiti taro te ora, ake ake amene. Amen.